God sees you. Do you wonder if anyone really knows and understands what you are going through right now? Already in early 2021, I have loved ones that are experiencing the pain of losing a family member, having health issues, and having financial uncertainty and loss. In my lifetime, I've experienced some of these same types of pain. During those moments, God reminded me that he is a suffering God. In Isaiah, Jesus is referred to as the suffering servant. And he sees and knows the pain that we go through. I share this with you because I have good news for you. If you or someone you are loving are going through any of these things, God sees you and knows that what you're going through. And he's done something about it. In the book of Matthew 9, 36, we read what Jesus says when he sees you and me. It says, starting in verse 35 and going through 38, And Jesus went through all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the gospel, or the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So I just want to focus on verse 36. We read what Jesus sees when he sees you and me. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He sees the crowds. There's a big difference between what you and me see when we see crowds of people. I know during the pandemic, we haven't been around many crowds. But normally we can see crowds cheering on athletes or musicians. We can even see crowds in churches. Or we can see crowds of people assembled for other purposes. But when Jesus sees crowds, he has compassion for them. For he understands and feels the pain of what you and I are going through in the midst of those crowds. When you feel alone and isolated, that no one knows what you're going through, God sees you and feels compassion for you. Compassion. The Bible says because Jesus has experienced temptation or trials and afflictions, he is able to help you. Hebrews 2.18 says, For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Tempted can mean going through trials and afflictions. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we do not have a high priest, that is Jesus, who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Why does he feel compassion for you and for me? Again, Matthew 9, 36, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He knows that you're distressed and downcast like sheep without a shepherd. Another reading in the New American Standard reads, distressed and downcast. In the original Greek language, harass or distress means to skin, flay, and rend. Not a very comfortable thing for a sheep to have to go through. To flay literally means to peel off the skin of a corpse or carcass or to whip or beat so hardly as to remove their skin. To rend means to cause great emotional pain to a person or a heart. So these are the words that Jesus used when he described the metaphor for how he sees us like sheep without a shepherd. You know, the shepherd became the sheep, the Lamb of God. Jesus became the Lamb of God. If you've ever seen the movie, The Passion of the Christ, you can see a depiction of how Jesus was whipped so badly that it removed much of his skin and caused him to bleed profusely. The Bible says he went through this pain because, because he loves and cares for you. Prior to that, 
he went through the Garden of Gethsemane where he had great emotional pain that was dripping almost like drops of blood that he knew he was going to have to face the cross. He goes through this pain because he loves you and cares for you. When we are distressed emotionally, physically, financially, or in our relationships, it can cause excruciating pain and damage to us. But here's the good news. Jesus has compassion and feels the pain we are going through, and he's done something about it. God sees you. None of us can escape the experience of pain, whether it's mental, social, emotional, physical, financial, or vocational. The Bible tells us after man sinned in the Garden of Eden, suffering and pain were introduced into a perfect world and interrupted our previously perfect relationship with God, our Creator. To this day, we chase pleasure and pursue idols of comfort, power, sex, and money, hoping to avoid and be distracted from pain. Some of us use drugs, alcohol, sex, or social media and the internet and things we can find there to distract from this pain. When he saw the crowds, Jesus had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, distressed and downcast like sheep without a shepherd. Are you like a sheep without a shepherd? Jesus uses the metaphor of a sheep that doesn't have a shepherd that it is following or protected by. A shepherd's purpose is to take care of, lead, direct, and protect the sheep. Well, I've never been a shepherd. But for the past 15 years, we've had a miniature poodle named Captain Chaco. So instead of a shepherd, I've been kind of a dog herd, if there's such a word. No matter what he does, we love him, and he still brings a lot of joy in our lives. In recent years, his cataracts have prevented him from seeing. He relies on us, on us extra to help him find the door, to go outside to do his business. His age is kept up, catching up in other ways. Sometimes he just goes around in circles, wandering in the yard, unable to find the door. We often have to call for him to come, but he'll go in the opposite direction. He needs us to shepherd or dog herd him. A person without Jesus as a shepherd can be like Captain Chaco. We can wander in circles, not knowing where to go, and making a mess of our lives. Jesus, who we celebrate his birth on Christmas, came as God in human form. He wants to be our shepherd and see us through our pain and lead us and provide for us if we'll just let him. 1 Peter 2, 24 and 25 says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Here's the good news. This verse says Jesus took all of your sins that have caused you pain and carried them in his body so we can die to sin and have a new life of righteousness, to have a life knowing God now and for eternity. This verse says his wounds, when he was beaten and crucified, were done so he can bring you healing that you couldn't have without him. Will you believe that he took all your sins that caused you pain in his body on the tree or cross? Will you pray and accept God's invitation to be your personal shepherd and the overseer of your soul? God sees you. In conclusion, God invites you to pray to him in your need. This past year, when I experienced a crisis, I began to see how empty my life was for the things of God. How little I had sought God and talked to him. I couldn't remember the last time I had gotten on my knees to bow and to pray to him. It was too painful now, I thought at the time, to even try. But I did, and continue to do so, and I have seen him work in great ways in my life. He invites you and me to draw near to him. God speaks to you and me through Hebrews 4.16 and says, Let us then, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, or bow to the Lord and pray that we may receive mercy and may find grace or undeserved favor to help in time of need.
God sees you.